start. And, um, and it was about six pages long, handwritten, where I just shared my testimony, my story about how God had come into my life at 16 and how I had made these different mistakes, but Jesus had forgiven me. Six pages. I even wrote a little diagram on the last page. Of, I said, well, here's God and here's man. And we try to reach God with our own effort, but Jesus came down and I drew a little cross and he made a way for us to have a relationship with him. And it's, it's not just information, but I've actually placed my faith in Christ. And I said, I was nervous to, I wrote this in the letter. I'm nervous to give this to you. I was nervous to send this to you because I thought at the next family dinner, I was gonna make things very awkward. I said, I felt like at Thanksgiving, I was gonna make things awkward. I said, but because I love you and because I've never shared my story with you, I decided to write this anyway. Basically, I was saying, I decided to take the scary step of faith and send this to you. So once I wrote one letter, I kind of got on a roll and I wrote the identical letter, like I literally copied it. And I sent, I, well, so I had written to two separate aunt and uncle sets. And can I tell you guys, now just, just, just imagine how I put these in these envelopes and I'm going to walk them to the post office or you know to the post office box my mailbox, and I did not want to mail them. I thought, I'm about to blow this thing out of the water. Like, I'm about to change this thing. Like, I'm about to make this personal. It's not just Lori off being a missionary, but I'm about to bring this all the way home, and, and, and we're going to have to talk about the fact that I sent you this letter. And that I invited you to put your faith in Christ. And uh, that's what we're talking about here. I did not feel courageous. I felt scared. I felt like I'm going to change things forever. I mailed those letters. It was a hard day. I was scared. I was fearful. I didn't hear from any of them for weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and part of me was like, maybe I didn't get it and I wouldn't have to deal with this. <laughs> you know what? I did see them at Thanksgiving. Every one of them thanked me for writing that letter. They were thankful for the message, but they were just kind of thankful for the thought that I would put into writing such a long letter. And one of the four, later on that, that year, I stood by her on our driveway where I held one hand and my sister held the other hand of my aunt and she prayed and placed her faith in Christ. We never know the steps of faith that we're taking could affect somebody's eternity. And that's what it did with my aunt Kim. Okay. So what about you? You know I was going to bring this back to you. <laughs> God is probably now or in the future going to have you take a scary step of faith. It won't mean that you don't feel nervous. It means like Joshua, you've got to move forward. God's saying, I will be with you. I need you to move into the promised land. He's saying to you guys, I need you to move into the next phase of your life. I need you to step into a new area I want you to rise up into. And I will be with you. Really? The funny thing is, after writing those letters, or now even as I'm older and I look back on it, it it's opened my relationship with them. I have nothing to hide. I shared them my whole story and the gospel. They know exactly what I'm about. I've been able to revisit that letter uh, time and time again. I went at lunch with the other aunt after that. I was able to talk to her about, well, remember that thing I put in that letter? That's what I do now. Where are you at on that journey? So I, it's actually served as kind of this marker I'm able to go back to and talk with them about. But I was able to mail those things and take that little step of faith because I had taken other little steps of faith in college and other little steps with other people, and I was ready to take that bigger one. The little things, the little things that God's put me in your life, pass that test. Take that step. All right, so this passage contained the principles necessary for our spiritual success of every age. This advice will never grow old. It's relative to us, whether we're in high school, junior high, singles, married, divorced, married again, grandparents, living in a nursing home. We can always understand that we may be prepared for something else in our future. That God has a step of faith for us to take. In the life of a leader or women that follow the Lord, there's going to be times of testing and preparation. You might be in it right now. There is not success without dedication to God's word. And that we can step out in faith despite fear and discouragement because we can know that God is with us. Let me pray. 
Lord, we thank you that you are with us. We know that because you tell us in your word. You had it recorded so we would always know that when we take those scary steps of faith, we're not doing it alone. And we have each other to cheer us on and push us forward when we're beginning to hesitate. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Would you help us pass the test? Would you help us be prepared for the other things you have in our lives and in our futures? And just the example we can be to the women around us and to our children and grandchildren that will come after us. And so, Lord, we just say that we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. So there's some discussion questions. I want you to pick this thing apart at your tables. And uh, thanks for coming today. And I uh, hope you have fun with those discussion questions. Bye-bye.